Chatham County, North Carolina, was formed in 1771 amid the rolling hills of the North Carolina Piedmont, a plateau region nestled between the Appalachian Mountains and the Atlantic Coastal Plain. Early inhabitants of the region included both Iroquoian and Siouan peoples, with European settlers arriving as early as the mid-18th century. The small farming settlement grew quickly and by the time North Carolina gained statehood on November 21, 1789, Chatham County had a population of approximately 9,000. Within the beautiful, lush, rolling hills of Chatham County is a mysterious aberration that has become the center of one of North Carolina's most infamous legends. An eerie, barren circle of land where vegetation will not grow and wildlife will avoid at all cost. It is a site that has become known simply as the Devil's Tramping Ground. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you are listening to Southern Gothic. Just 50 miles south of Greensboro, North Carolina, amidst lush pine forests and rolling hills, is a large patch of barren nothingness. This empty spot is circular in shape, roughly 40 feet across, and for as long as anyone can remember, it has been completely devoid of all plant life. According to legend, this barren circle of earth is where the devil rises at night and walks a circular path as he imagines and plots what evil he plans to unleash. And it is this frequent, consistent motion of these nightly walks over the same path that has permanently worn away the Earth's ability to sustain living nature there. As a result, it has become known as the Devil's Tramping Ground. Of the location, a Greensboro journalist and author, John Harden, memorably wrote in his book, The Devil's Tramping Ground and Other North Carolina Mystery Stories, that quote, The devil goes there to walk in circles as he thinks up new means of causing trouble for humanity. There, sometimes during the dark of night, the majesty of the underworld of evil silently tramps around that bare circle, thinking, plotting and planning against good in behalf of wrong. The tramping ground is a bare circle, and notably, there's a clear path of about a foot wide on the outermost edge. And whether this path is indeed the devil's is up for debate. But the tramping ground is in fact completely devoid of all plant life and obstruction, growing or otherwise and it has been said that any attempt to transplant living plant life into this path has failed. Within the inner portion of this circle, there's some limited vegetation, including some moss and wiry grasses such as broom's edge. 
But eerily enough, just as plants brought into the circle fail to grow, when people have attempted to remove the broom's edge and other grasses to plant them elsewhere, they too fail to thrive. As for non-living obstructions, the legend contends that anything left in the path of the tramping ground is mysteriously removed from the circle altogether by the next morning. Some visitors to the site have claimed they left sticks and stones in the path, even anchoring them down with string. But sure enough, when they returned, these objects were moved from the circle, supposedly kicked away by the devil during his tramping in the night. But it is not just plant life that the devil's tramping ground is said to have an effect on. Animals are leery of the place as well. Legend says that birds will not build their nests in the nearby trees, and wild game has never been found within the empty circle. As for more domesticated animals, dogs are said to shy away from the area altogether, likely to yip and howl if forced to go near the site. Some reports have claimed that even well-trained hunting dogs will give up a scent, drop tail and turn back to the safety of their owners before treading into the circle willingly. As for the visitors, venture to the devil's tramping ground. Some have reportedly witnessed the sight of glowing red eyes watching them from the middle of the circle. Others have claimed to hear a soothing voice and melody which lulls them to sleep where they stand. But when they awaken, they find themselves miles away from the circle. And those who have dared attempt to stay the night at the circle have reported seeing strange shadow-like figures watching them from the tree line. One witness account is of a man who chose to spend the night with his two dogs with the aim of disproving the legend. And he managed to stay the entire night in a tent erected in the middle of the circle. But the following day he reported that in the darkness he heard footsteps walking circles around his tent. Of course, legend says that those who were able to stay the night at the devil's tramping ground are never quite as sane as they were before. No one seems to know exactly how the story of the devil's tramping ground began, but most versions of the legend place its origin about 150 years ago some specifying the year 1882 as the story's beginning, while others claim it dates much further back to the late 1700s, when the wilderness of North Carolina was being settled by colonists of European ancestry. Yet it is unknown exactly who first discovered the bear's circle in the woods. For seemingly as long as anyone can remember the circle, it has been and remains empty. Of course, given the eerie nature of this spot, it is unsurprising that other, more historically based origin stories have arisen to explain the mystery. One of the oldest and best known explanations surrounding this mysterious circle dates back hundreds of years to when native tribes still inhabited the land that was then called the Great Flats. It is said that at periodic times, the tribe would come together for celebrations and feasts. And it was the land that is now the tramping ground that served as the meeting place for these assemblies and festivities. There, thousands would gather, and in that now barren circle, the Braves performed their vigorous war dances, calling on the Great Spirit to give them success in their endeavors. In return, 
as a token to those faithful native braves. The great spirit kept the circle they created by their moccasined feet as they danced about the fire. And so the circle remains barren to this day in memory of those braves and their fierce devotion to the spirit. Another legend that cites Native Americans as the creators of the tramping ground also links the location to another famous mystery, that of the infamous lost colony of Roanoke. The legend claims that years before the first European settlers arrived, two rival native tribes met in battle at the present-day site of the Devil's Tramping Ground. It was a short but bitter conflict that stained the ground with the blood of numerous dead and wounded. And of those lost was Chief Croatan, the leader of the losing tribe, who was mortally wounded during the conflict. With the leader of their tribe now gone and the casualties severe, the remaining warriors gathered up the women and children and ceremoniously buried their chief, honoring his legacy by naming the spot Croatan before fleeing eastward to avoid any further conflict with their enemies. As to the barren circle, it is said that the great spirit keeps it so honoring the faithful chief buried at the center. But this particular legend does not end with the tribe's exodus. In 1590, when Englishman John White returned to the settlement he had helped establish on Roanoke Island in what is now North Carolina, he found it deserted with no sign as to the whereabouts of the colonists he had left there two years prior, except for one. The word Croatone had been carved into one of the fence posts. Many historians have speculated the meaning of this clue is that it is a reference to the Algonquin-speaking Croatone or Croatan people who lived on a nearby island. The theory is that these colonists had abandoned their fortification and joined the native people However, the legend of Chief Croatan's death suggests different, claiming that this clue may have actually referred to the mighty chief's final resting place over 200 miles inland. Yet infamously, the 115 men and women of Roanoke were never found. Like many curious things in nature, science and logic have also been used in an attempt to understand the truth behind the devil's tramping ground. One claim is that the bare circular path of the tramping ground is the result of years of horses and mules walking in circles to supply power for grinding cane at a molasses mill, and that the constant tread of their hooves was so pronounced that the vegetation has simply never returned. But of course this theory is quickly negated because similar barren paths at other sites of past mills have regrown vegetation. A more scientific approach to explain the anomaly was undertaken by Harry Davis, a former curator of the North Carolina State Museum, as well as Dr. J.L. Stuckey, a former state geologist for North Carolina. While in the area of the circle, the pair encountered the remains of an ancient salt lick where the buffalo and deer who long ago roamed the region would go lick at the ground to ingest salt and other beneficial minerals. So Davis theorized that it was the presence of this salt lick which caused the barrenness of the ground as plant life is unable to thrive in an area with high salt content. Oddly, he also noted that some of the area plant life would have been more commonly found along the coast where it could thrive on moisture from brackish water, thus concluding that it was this heavy presence of salt that has caused the unique nature of the tramping ground circle. 
Further scientific investigations also support this theory. W.A. Bridge of the W.A. Bridges Laboratory and Dr. I.E. Miles of the Soil Testing Division of the North Carolina Department of Agriculture ran tests on the soil taken from the middle of the circular path. The analysis showed that the soil from the path is in fact sterile and can truly not support growth of any kind. However, these tests and scientific inquiries still do not answer all of the questions surrounding the nature of the Devil's Tramping Ground. Questions such as, if this circular section of soil is too poor to support plant life, how is it that trees and other vegetation are able to grow right up to its edge? It is known that soil rebuilds itself, regaining nutrients over time, Yet why and how has this spot remained barren throughout recorded history? It is of course in our nature as humans to want to understand when a mystery is placed in front of us. We create legends and lore to give explanations to situations and environments that are beyond our comprehension and the legends and lore of the Devil's Tramping Ground, which have been passed down through the ages, are precisely this. Because even as we utilize science to attempt to bring understanding, we are still unsatisfied and left asking more questions. For in the forests of North Carolina, this barren circle of unknown origin remains. A place so mysterious that folks continue to believe it is where evil is imagined and brought into the world under the dark of night. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you are listening to Southern Gothic. Southern Gothic is an independently produced podcast, written and produced by Brianne and Brandon Schecksneider, and made possible by listeners like you. For more information on how you can support Southern Gothic, visit patreon.com slash southerngothicmedia. There, you can receive updates, rewards, merch discounts, and more, as well as gain access to our special members-only series, Southern Gothic, The Monsters. This week's episode also includes a special guest appearance by PJ Fergnetti of Simply Strange Podcast, a podcast devoted to telling tales of the world's strangest stories. Lucky Lady Shacks.